What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and it's that time again. Today we're doing February sneaker releases, sit or sell. Thanks so much for tuning in today guys. Make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. But with all that out of the way, let's get into it. We're nearing the end of January 2018, which is kind of crazy to say because that month went by really, really fast. Sneaker release wise, January was a little bit slow, but that's because we had a crazy December and a crazy November, but it looks like things are ramping back up for February. And guys, February looks insane. I'm really not excited about spending all this money, but I'm definitely excited about all these sneakers. Before we get into the main video, if you guys haven't seen one of my sneaker release sit or sell videos before. Basically how it works is I read through all the important sneaker releases of that month and let you guys know whether I think the shoe is going to sit on shelves or whether I think it's going to sell out. Just as a disclaimer, of course this video is all my own opinions. Don't just buy something because someone told you that a shoe is going to sell. Buy something because you actually like the shoe for yourself. And if you want to resell the shoe, that's fine too, but make sure to do a little bit of research for yourself to make sure that the shoe you're buying is actually going to make you money and not going to lose money. But with all that out of the way, we definitely need to get into it because there are a lot of sneakers dropping in February. I actually had to write them down on a Word document this time around because there's like two pages worth of shoes. So starting things off on February 1st, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Flyknit Black History Month. This is a pretty interesting colorway of the Black History Month Air Jordan 1. This time around, you've got three main colors on the upper of the shoe. You've got a dark green on the heel, a black in the midfoot, and a red on the toe, which I think all look pretty nice together. Of course, this colorway is on the Flyknit Air Jordan 1, and recently the Flyknit Air Jordan 1 hasn't really been selling out at all. It's kind of just been sitting on shelves. So in my opinion, the Air Jordan 1 Flyknit BHM is probably going to sit. Next up, we've got a very clean colorway of the Vapormax, the Vapormax BHM. This is an all black and gray Vapormax with a couple touches of red and orange on the outsole, and overall, I think it's a super clean colorway. It's pretty understated and pretty wearable. I'm still not a huge fan of Vapormaxes, but if I were to pick any up, this might be the colorway that I'd go for. This is one of the shoes that I think is a little bit tricky because it might sell out in places like the Sneakers app, but it probably will be sitting in Foot Lockers for a little while. So I guess my thought process on this is, is that if you're really looking for a pair of these, you should be able to find a pair a couple days after release. So because of that, I I think I'll call this one a sit. I could be wrong because Vapor Maxes are definitely hit and misses, but I think this one will probably be sitting on shelves. Next, we've got the Nike Kobe AD Mid in the Port Wine colorway. It's kind of just a maroon Kobe AD Mid. I think it's gonna sit. Moving over to the Adidas side of things, we've got the Adidas Ultra Boost Laceless in the triple black colorway. I have a pair of the Ultra Boost Laceless, I think it's a good shoe, and I actually do like this triple black colorway of the Laceless because it truly is a triple black shoe, it doesn't have weird variations of blacks and grays woven through the upper. And even though this is a triple black shoe, I think the fat is starting to die out a little bit, so I think the shoe is probably going to sit. Rounding out February 1st, we've got a shoe that I'm actually pretty excited for, the Adidas Ultra Boost 5th Anniversary. This 5th Anniversary Ultra Boost has some really cool accents that are kind of throwbacks to previous iterations. You've got the gray accents on the cage, which you rarely have in a pair of Ultra Boosts. You've got a black and gray prime knit upper, which I think looks super clean. You've got yellow accents on the tongue and yellow accents on the lace tips. And overall, I think it's a really clean shoe, and it's definitely going to be a little limited. So because of the fact that it's a limited 5th Anniversary version of the Ultra Boost, I think the shoe is going to sell. Moving on to February 2nd, we've got a couple Air Maxes dropping. The first is the Air Max 270 in the Hot Punch colorway. This is one of the first times that the Air Max 270s have released, and even though I'm not a huge fan of this pink color on this sneaker, I do think the shoe is going to sell. A lot of people seem really interested about the Air Max 270, and I think that interest is going to drive people to hit up the stores and check out what the sneaker is all about. I think the same thing goes for the Air Max 270 Total Orange. I think the shoe is going to sell. Next up, we've got by far the most expensive sneaker dropping on February 2nd. It's the Nike Hyper Adapt 1.0 in the Wolf Gray colorway. Throughout the beginning of this year, Nike has been releasing multiple colorways of the $720 sneaker, and surprisingly, They've all sold out. I mean, there's no resale to speak of, so I'm assuming the shoes are either pretty limited or people are just genuinely interested about the shoe and they're willing to spend $720 to check it out. But regardless, the shoes have been selling out and I think this is one of the better colorways that are dropping this year, so I think this one will be no different. I think the shoe is gonna sell. Also on February 2nd, Adidas is dropping the NMD Racer in the Vivid Pink colorway. I'm pretty interested in the original NMD Racer because I think it's an interesting take on what the NMD already is. However, the original colorway didn't sell out and I don't think this one will be any different, especially because it's in pink, so I think the shoe is going to sit. Another colorway of the NMD Racer is also dropping on February 2nd, the NMD Racer Ash Gray. I think the colorway is a little bit better, but I think it's going to be the same exact thing. I think the shoe is going to sit. Moving on to February 3rd, the first shoe dropping is the Air Force One Foam Posit Cup. This time around, the shoe comes in an all black colorway. Unlike the colorway that released last month, I don't think this shoe is going to be as popular, and I think the shoe is probably going to sit. 
Next up on February 3rd, we've got the stateside release of the Air Jordan 6 Chinese New Year. This shoe released in China back in January and it's got a very interesting and unique black, red, and gold look. A majority of the upper is printed with white and red accents and then you've also got embroidered gold accents throughout the upper. These accents form a sort of floral pattern and I think overall it does look pretty good. But for me, it is kind of busy but I don't think it's too busy for me to try and pull off. Overall, I think it's a pretty clean sneaker and I think it's gonna sell. Rounding off February 3rd, we've got the Air Jordan 9 All-Star. This black and white All-Star colorway of the Air Jordan 9 looks really clean. I mean, you can't really go wrong with black and white, and the Air Jordan 9 in general is a pretty good looking sneaker, so when you put the two together, you kind of have a winner. However, I do think the shoe is going to be a GR, and I think it's probably going to sit. Moving on to February 4th, we've got the Air Foam Posit 1 Big Bang. Many people have been calling this the Galaxy Foam Posit 2.0 because of its resemblance to the All-Star Galaxy Foam Posit from a couple years ago. In my opinion, I kind of think it looks like the Weatherman foams from a little while ago and less like the Galaxy foams. I really prefer the original Galaxy foams to these new ones, but I don't think the colorway is bad overall. However, it doesn't really matter what I think because there's already a lot of hype around the shoe because of the very limited release that happened up in Boston about a month ago. Right now, the shoe is selling for about a grand. I think the resale will significantly drop once the shoe releases, but I still think it's going to sell out. Moving on to February 5th, we've got the Air Force One High BHM. This is a pretty clean AF1 High that utilizes the black, green, and red colorway that we've seen on most of the other BHM sneakers this year. I definitely think it's an easy sneaker to rock, and I think the colorway does look good, but I think regardless, the shoe is probably going to sit. On February 8th, the Air Force One Lunar New Year drops. This is a primarily white Air Force One with a couple different floral accents on the heel. I think it's a pretty clean looking sneaker overall. It's not really for me, and I think it's gonna sit. Next up, we've got the SF AF1 High, also in the Lunar New Year colorway. Again, a pretty clean looking primarily white SF AF1, but I still think the shoe is gonna sit. On February 9th, we've got the LeBron 15 Hardwood Classic. I love the LeBron 15. I think it's a really great shoe, both for lifestyle wear and on court. This particular colorway is dominated by a sort of royal blue, and I think overall, it is pretty clean. However, because it is most likely going to be a GR sneaker and the colorway isn't anything too crazy, I think the shoe is probably going to sit. Also dropping on February 9th is the Air Jordan 32 Low Chinese New Year. Something that I found kind of interesting over the past couple months is that special edition versions of Air Jordan 32 Lows seem to be selling out. Most notably, the Gatorade Air Jordan 32 Lows, a shoe that I thought looked great, but I just didn't think was going to sell out. But it did. Honestly, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I think the Air Jordan 32 Low Chinese New Year may actually sell. Moving on to February 10th is a shoe that I'm actually really looking forward to, the PlayStation PG2. This is the first release of Paul George's second signature shoe, and it's obvious that he's bringing the heat because he collaborated with PlayStation to make the shoe come to life. The shoe comes in a primarily black colorway with a couple different blue and red accents to symbolize PlayStation. My favorite feature is a light-up PlayStation logo on the tongue. I think that's insane, and it reminds me a lot of the original PlayStation collab from a long time ago. Overall, I think it's a super dope sneaker. I'm sure it's going to be super limited, and I'm definitely going to try and grab it. This shoe is definitely going to sell out. Moving on to February 14th, we've got the Air Jordan 3 1988 Dunk Contest White Cement 3. This is one of the cleanest shoes to drop this month, and that's primarily because it is a White Cement 3 colorway. However, this shoe is pretty special because instead of the regular gray outsole, you've got this translucent outsole with a red line right through the midfoot. The red line symbolizes where Michael Jordan jumped off the free throw line, and I think the storytelling behind the shoe is really cool. This shoe is probably going to be pretty limited. I know I'm definitely going to be going for a pair myself, and I think a lot of other people will be too, so I think the shoe is going to sell. Also dropping on February 13th is an Air Jordan 32 Low in the same colorway and theme. I think this 32 also looks pretty great as well. And like I said about the last 32 that was a special edition, there's a good chance that it may sell. Moving on to February 15th, we've got two Westbrook Jordans dropping. The first is the Jordan Why Not 0.1 in the two-way colorway. This is a black and white colorway of the shoe. I definitely think it looks clean, but it's nothing too crazy, so I think the shoe is probably going to sit. The other Westbrook dropping is the Jordan Why Not 0.1 in the City of Flight colorway. This is an LA themed version of the shoe and again, even though I don't think it's a bad sneaker, I think it's probably going to sit. Also on the 15th, we've got the Kyrie 4 All-Star dropping. I'm not a huge fan of the crazy colorway on this shoe, I just don't think it's for me. And I think it's possible that the shoe itself may be relatively limited, but I think regardless, the shoe is probably going to sit. Next up, we've got the KD-10 in the All-Star colorway. Again, another kind of crazy All-Star colorway for a basketball sneaker. But I gotta be honest, when was the last time that we saw a KD-10 sell out? I think the shoe is gonna sit. Also on the 15th, we've got the wider release of the Adidas Boost You Wear Level 1. This shoe just dropped at the end of January, and now it's getting an even wider release. The Boost You Wear Level 1 did technically sell out when it first dropped, but I think because it's a wider release and everyone who really wanted a pair probably already got their pair, I just don't think the shoe is gonna sell. 
I kind of think the shoe is dope. Also releasing on the 15th, we've got the Harden Volume 2 in the maroon colorway. This next iteration of James Harden's signature sneaker is definitely a refinement of the original. I'm sure the shoe is a great basketball performer and overall it doesn't look bad, but let's be honest, it's going to be a GR and it's probably going to sit. And finally, rounding out the 15th, we've got the Adidas i5923 in the black and white colorway. The i5923 used to be called the Aniki, and then they changed the name. Apparently for legal reasons, I'm not totally sure. The upper of the shoe is primarily black with some white accents in the three stripes. And then I'm sure the most appealing feature for a lot of people is the blacked out boost. This is definitely one of the more clean colorways of this silhouette, but I think the hype around the shoe has kind of died out, so I think the shoe is probably going to sit. Moving on to February 16th, we've got some insane Jordan heat dropping. The first shoe dropping is sort of unconfirmed. We know that the shoe is going to drop at some time in February, but we just don't know the exact date. And that shoe is the Air Jordan 1 Gold Toe. This is an all patent leather variant of the Air Jordan 1, which looks pretty similar to the Complex Con exclusive from a couple months ago. Rather than being a top three or a what the iteration of the shoe, each side of the shoe is exactly the same, meaning that the toe on both shoes is going to be gold, the side panel is going to be white, and each side of the shoe is going to be exactly the same. Based on the popularity of the top three gold colorway, that just dropped a couple months ago, I am sure this shoe is going to sell out. Moving on to two shoes that I'm definitely going to be trying to grab, the Air Jordan 8 OVOs in the black and white colorway. I saw both these shoes at the Air Jordan Future of Flight event in LA a couple days ago. You guys should definitely check out that vlog if you haven't yet. These are definitely a more subtle version of the OVO collab, and I know a lot of people aren't huge fans of the Air Jordan 8s, but let's be honest, it's an OVO collab. It's going to sell. I'd honestly be happy with either colorway. I think they're both really clean. And finally, rounding out the 16th, we've got the Soulfly and Air Jordan 17 Low. This yellow and black 17 Low is a very limited version of the sneaker. Obviously, it's a collaboration between Soulfly and Air Jordan. I'm not sure exactly how the shoe is going to release, but I know it's going to release in very limited quantities, and the shoe is definitely going to sell out. Moving on to February 17th, we've got my most anticipated sneaker of the month by far, the Air Jordan 3 Black Cement. The 17th is the official release date of the BC3s, however the shoe was technically released a little bit early on the sneakers app a couple days ago in very limited quantities. The Black Cement 3 is a quintessential Air Jordan 3 colorway, and this year Nike is retroing the shoe with the coveted Nike Air branding on the heel tab. I've seen these shoes in person a couple times, and I've got to say, the leather quality is actually really nice. Now I don't think this shoe is going to be super limited, but I know a lot of people are nostalgic for this sneaker. and. Let's be honest, it's a great looking shoe. And because of that, I think the shoe is going to sell. I really need to get my hands on a pair so I can review them for you guys. On February 22nd, we've got a new Nike silhouette dropping. The Nike Epic React Flyknit. This shoe is dropping in both a black and a white colorway, and I've got to be honest, I am really excited to try out this shoe. This is the first time Nike has made the entire midsole of a shoe completely out of React cushioning. But I've got to be honest, I'm kind of torn on whether I think the shoe is going to sell or not. The reason I say that is a lot of times when a new technology comes out, it usually will sell out because people are interested in it. But at the same time, the shoe was announced about a week ago, and I haven't seen too much hype on the sneaker, so... I think there's a good chance that the shoe might sit. Moving on to February 23rd, we've got another crazy day of releases. The first shoe dropping is the much anticipated Air Jordan 1 Bread Toe. This shoe is a very similar colorway to the Black Toe ones that have released multiple times throughout the years. Except, as I'm sure you guys know, the main difference between this pair and the Black Toes is that rather than having a white toe, it's got a red toe. This colorway is super clean, a lot of people are really hyped on it, and it's going to be pretty limited. I think it's safe to say that the shoe is going to sell. Also dropping on the 23rd, we've got an Adidas Pharrell Human Race NMD Trail. This Pharrell NMD is coming in a white or cream blank canvas colorway. It's definitely the most simple Pharrell NMD to drop, but I think a lot of people are hyped on it, and I think the colorway is very clean. I mean, let's be honest, guys. Is there really any question? The shoe is definitely going to sell out. And rounding off February 23rd, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Flyknit Derek Jeter. This is probably the most limited Flyknit Air Jordan 1 to drop. It comes in a white, blue, and gold colorway to honor Derek Jeter. It's got a translucent outsole with the word respect written across the bottom. I mean, overall, it's a pretty clean Flyknit Air Jordan 1. I'm not certain on this, but because it is a Derek Jeter version of the Flyknit Air Jordan 1, I think it may sell. Moving on to February 24th, we've got another pretty insane collab, the Bape and Adidas Dame 4 Green Camo. This shoe is basically just a camo version of the Dame 4 with a couple like fighter jet accents on it. I really don't like the way this shoe looks, but it is a Bape collab, so it's definitely going to be hyped regardless. There's also a black camo version of the shoe dropping on the same day. It's very similar to what happened about a year ago when they dropped the Bape NMD collaboration, except this time they're using a silhouette that's not as hyped. But regardless, it's a Bape collaboration. I'm sure it's going to sell out. We've got one release on February 25th, and that's the Jordan Westbrook 0.1 Cotton Shot. This is an orange and blue Westbrook 0.1. If you're into the 0.1 or like this colorway, maybe it's the shoe for you, but I definitely don't think the shoe is going to sell out. 
And finally, rounding out the month of February, we've got one of the most hype releases of the year, guaranteed, the Off-White Air Jordan 1 in the triple white colorway. Now, I think it's important to get the bad news out of the way first because it's going to break a lot of people's hearts, but this shoe is starting out as a European exclusive only. So if you live in somewhere that's not Europe, which most likely you do, you're kind of out of luck. That really bums me out because I really wanted this shoe. I saw it in hand at the Future of Flight event. It's a super clean shoe. I love the way it looks, but unless I want to pay resale, which I'm sure is going to be insane because it's so limited, there's no way I'm getting the shoe. But I think it's important to remember that just because the shoe is starting as a European only release doesn't mean there's not going to be a US release or a worldwide release a couple months later. Nike has been known to do things like that and it would be kind of crazy to me if they only dropped this shoe just in Europe. So if you really want this shoe and you don't live in Europe, sit tight. Don't pay resale just yet because there may still be a chance that you can get it for retail. Well, take that with a grain of salt because the shoe is going to be super limited even if it does drop in the United States so the chance of you getting one is still, still pretty small. That shoe is just so clean. I really need to try and get a pair. That pretty much wraps it up for the list today, guys. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you think of all the sneaker releases going down this month and which pairs you're looking forward to most. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to me, Seth Fowler, if you want to see more content just like this. And follow me in all other forms of social media. The links will be in the description below.